Well, hello. Today is Thursday, January the 9th, 2020. I got to get that 2020 together. But anyway, my name is Angela Hooper Minifield of Minifield and Associates, and this is your HR moment for today. So as you guys know, I go to uh, some of the Facebook groups I'm in for supervisors, LinkedIn, and other places, or even feedback from trainings. And this is where I get many of the topics that I talk about for my HR moments. Because at the end of the day, I know people typically will search Google to get answers to quick questions. I know I do. And so I asked in one of the groups that I'm in with a few thousand supervisors, you know, what is one of the top things they wish someone had discussed with them prior to becoming a supervisor? Well, one of the things that came up first and foremost was how to manage the stress of supervision. And the person went on um, to some degree of um, elaboration about having no idea and how mentors and other supervisors had talked to them extensively about shifting from being an employee to supervising others. Yet no one had really talked about the stress. And so, you know, I thought this was a really good point, and I thought it was something that we could talk about just a little bit here. You know, how do you deal with the stress of supervision? Well, the mindset side of me, of course, is immediately going to tell you that some of this is within your control. Now, many of you may not agree with me because you will tell me, Angela, you don't understand. You don't know my team. You don't know my organization. And this stress is real and it's hard to deal with. But I'm still going to tell you that, yes, I get it. You know, there was a time, you know, I worked for some not so good managers and I had some team members who I would say then caused me a lot of stress. But one of the things I had to grow to realize is, number one, people can't control the way that I feel. I get to pick and choose. And so if I'm allowing myself to be stressed, right? So it's not negating their behavior, but if I'm allowing myself to feel the burden of the stress, there's some things that I can do. Now, it's not going to make it go away totally, but I think this is some good coping skills that we can all employ. So number one, find out what are some of the things that relax you? You know, what is that thing for you? There was a part of a point in my career when I worked a job that was highly seasonal and during our peak season, we would work six and seven uh, day week six and seven day work weeks. I went one time eight weeks with only two days off. And so I say that to say the stress was real. Also, I was working shift work. So um, sometimes that was midnight to 8 a.m. Other times that was 3.30 to midnight. And so just the quote unquote stress of that, right? Your body is getting adjusted. There was just a lot going on. So for me, I had to figure out really quick, what were the things that relaxed me? Now, full transparency, I love music. And so listening to music was one of those things that would help me. Prayer, meditation, bubble baths, you know, and again, everybody's different. Um, I remember one time just being intentional and says, okay, I'm going to the movies, I'm going to see a comedy. Now, this was before Netflix and chill, right? This was before DVRs. But the point I'm making is I had a list of things that relaxed me. Now, did they take away all the angst that was happening at the workplace? No, but in that moment, I could at least decompress. And I think we all have to know what those things are. Another thing for me that I really love and I do to this day is massages. Um, they really relax me and it helps me clear my head. So I say that to say, number one, figure out what that thing is for you and have you a list of things because you can't always do all. The, the thing that helps the most, but you can do something. Remember our good, better, best model, right? And so know what those things are and keep that list handy and then go to it and still away you sometime on each day or as frequently as you can to decompress. The other thing I, I would suggest that you do if stress is really taking um, a toll on you is to, to begin to track the things that are stressing you out. Whether that's tardiness, behaviors, arguments, poor performance, what are those things that are um, causing you stress? Then prioritize them or rank them in levels of importance or significance to the stress, right? And then from there, begin to tackle them one at a time. 
Uh, the other thing I tell my coaching clients to do is figure out which of those things you can control. Because here's the thing, to be stressed for an extended period of time regarding something you have no control over, it's really not a good use of your energy. And last but not least, we know, and we've said this before, you've heard it before, where you put your focus or your energy is what expands in your life. So if you're thinking about the things that stress you out or the things that you don't like, guess what expands in your life? The things you don't like that stress you out. So this becomes a vicious cycle, right? And so as a result of that, I want you to know first, where is the stress coming from? Is it relationships? Is it things you're thinking about, things that you're doing, behaviors of other people? And again, what are those things you can control? And how can you mitigate that? Um, if it's something that you can't control, but it's really causing a big problem, then, you know, these are times when maybe we need to talk to HR. We talk to our supervisors. We talk to a peer, but we get some help to figure out how do I navigate this? And then I've also had supervisors on my team that actually asked to step away from supervision. And I say that because I think we need to realize that's an option, right? Just because you've been promoted to be a supervisor doesn't mean you have to stay a supervisor forever. And so you get the option to step away from that. There was a point in my career that I stepped away from supervision. And I must admit, I loved it. But then I went back to it. But it, I needed a break from managing people. Managing people is not easy. You've heard me say this before. But I say all that to say at the end of the day, stress is a killer. And I'm not, you know, being, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I'm not exaggerating or being hyperbolic. When I say stress is a killer, it's a killer. People die from stress, you know, uh, strokes, uh, heart issues, um, anxiety is real, depression, all these things are real. And so I say that to say, if something is stressing you out to the point that it's impeding your ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis and to take care of your health and your family and those things that matter to you, let the job go. It's a job. Your job is a means for you to have and do the things that you want to do on a material level in this um, earth. But your spirituality, your health, and all those things should supersede that. So I say all that to say, let it go. And it doesn't make you a bad supervisor. It means that you uh, care about yourself. And it may mean that you supervise again, but in another place. We've seen coaches, for instance, step away from coaching for a period of time, get their health together, um, expand on coping skills, and then they come back to coaching and they're very successful, even winning championships. So I say all this to say, don't feel obligated to stay in a situation just because you were promoted to it. That's not the way things go. So I hope this HR moment has been helpful for you. It's a start in the right direction. If you'd like to be a part of our community where we really work and focus on some of these things, I'd love to talk to you. But for now, seek ways to get you healthy, whole. And again, if you are beginning to dread going to work every day, I highly recommend you speak to someone in your organization. If you have an EAP, um, if you're a religious person, someone in your faith, but friends, your spouse, significant others, whoever that may be. But find someone to talk through this and begin to think through how do you get past this? Because I promise you, there is no job that I'm aware of that's worth stress to the level that it causes you to be um, incapable or um, unable to uh, operate at a level of efficiency and productivity and just have the normal uh, functions of a uh, adult. Have a great day. Again, today is Thursday, January 19, 2020. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.